There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Here I am with another review of a book that I judged for the semi-final round of the Booktube Prize judging for 2020. And that was Tracy Chevalier's 2019 novel, A Single Thread. I'm filming this review in the middle, middle of July, approximately. You won't see it until early August. Here we go. I had barely heard of Tracy Chevalier, other than that her most famous novel is Girl with a Pearl Earring, which seemed like the stereotype of kind of Oprah book commercial fiction when it came out, so I wasn't interested in it, but quite recently have heard some people who like literary fiction, which is all I'm really interested in, that said it was quite good. So I will try that someday, but in the meantime, I have now read A Single Thread. I love the way this novel opened. It's set in 1932, and it's set in the UK. Chevalier is an American writer. Oh, I just noticed now, but she lives in London. It's got a really great first chapter. The protagonist, Violet, she's like late 30s. She has just moved to Winchester from another town nearby, and she's snuck away from work during her lunch break to Winchester Cathedral. And the description of Winchester Cathedral, and I, as is my wont, I googled everything and looked at it and read up on it as I was reading this chapter, is a fascinating cathedral. And Chevalier does a marvelous job of bringing the interior of Winchester Cathedral to life through the eyes of her protagonist, Violet, who is really interested in all of the history of it. And I had never heard of all this stuff. Like, during the Cromwell Rebellion, they, the rebels smashed all the stained glass windows, and then after the monarchy was restored, those uh, shards of the stained glass window were put back together, but not to recreate the picture, so they're all mixed up, and it's just gorgeous. Here's a picture. Uh, just details like that, but not only the historical detail, I'm interested in that, that kind of historical detail, but also Violet seemed like kind of a badass. <laughs> she was sneaking into a special kind of dedication service for embroiderers, and they have this highfalutin Latin name that isn't exactly embroiderer. What the hell is it? They're cathedral broderers, and they do the embroidery for all of the church pew Christians and kneeling prayer thingies and all that. Violet is fairly new in town and she's not a member of this group and it's a really elite group and it's run by some really officious, <laughs> tight, controlling ladies and there's some kind of a dedication service and she sneaks in even though she's not a member and she gets called out by some of these busy bot, these control freaks and the way she rebels against that even just internally and kind of pretends that she's a member and it was really quite intriguing. And she meets somebody who eventually becomes a friend at the end of that chapter, Gilda. And I thought, oh, this is just kind of vaguely reminiscent of a Barbara Pym kind of feel to the opening of this novel. And I was quite taken with it. Unfortunately, everything after chapter one was so freaking boring. I hated this novel. I mean, yeah, I hated it. One star. I hated how boring it was. That first chapter should have been published as a short story because Tracy Chevalier didn't put one iota of any of that energy, that character. Where did that character that I found in Violet Speedwell in chapter one, where did it go? She just was so bored. She was just, oh my God. And everybody, even the people that had personalities, they were so black or white. She had a difficult mother, and what a boring character she was, because she was so predictably, like, there was no nuance to any of the characters in here. And the other thing that I hated about this novel was, this didn't feel like a British novel. I specialize in British fiction of the 1930s, and this read like some silly American commercial novelist doing a half-assed attempt to set a story there. Yes, the historical detail was interesting, but nothing about the characters felt British. Certainly not their dialogue. It was offensively bad on that level. I mean, yeah, commercial fiction sucks most of the time, and this one sucks so bad there wasn't a single thread of anything interesting going on here, people. And then there was a kind of a love story, and that was just revolting. 
puke worthily stupid. Again, I was really looking forward to reading a novel with a protagonist like this. She's unmarried. She's part of that surplus generation where so many men were, had been killed in the war, including her brother and her fiancé. That's not a spoiler. We learned this in the first chapter. And that what was she going to do with herself? But none of that was explored in any interesting way. It's Neo. You're writing from the present about the past. So you get to, as a writer, like Neo-Victorian. This is not Victorian. Neo-novelists can go into the past and write about what we're interested in now rather than to finding themselves constrained by what the social mores of that time were fine but the sexuality in this book that's fine to explore sexuality in a way that a, a novelist writing a novel in 1932 wouldn't feel free to do violet sexuality that we find out about from when she was younger because now she's just a maiden but she's re remembering her wild and crazy sex life as a single woman and it's like something out of sex in the city like it just was jarring I have no doubt that there were women who had sex lives like she had, but the way it's written, it's just historically jarring it. It doesn't feel like a period piece at all. This novel made me so mad because it started out with so much vitality, and then, I don't know, she just kind of phoned the rest of it in. And again, the things that I did enjoy were that there were some historical details, there was some bell ringers, and the description of that was interesting. And she kind of walked all over that county or whatever, all over that countryside. So, I mean, the setting, other than the fact that it had no historical accuracy, but the description of the landscape and of certain historical places was really well done. So Tracy Chevalier should have written a couple really great articles for a travel magazine, because she is not much of a novelist if this is anything to go by. What a monumental waste of time. I'm sorry to get so worked up, but don't waste your time. It was crap. Thanks for watching. One star. Oh my god, I'm so angry. <laughs>